I want to keep this brief because we, uh, most of the interesting things will probably be happening uh, up here. First of all, I want to again welcome you on behalf of the Federal Communication Commission uh, to this workshop. I, it's just, we do lots of workshops. Uh, most of those, for those who are familiar, typically are in the commission meeting room uh, in our, our headquarter building, and they usually involve a good mixture of uh, technologists, in some cases economists, and others in that, but we rarely have, I think, what we have today, namely uh, such a strong representation of academic research. Uh, one of my goals at, at the Commission has been to establish stronger links between academia and uh, uh, the policy makers simply because I believe that both can benefit from each other's awareness. I, I think we at the Commission have lots of interesting problems uh, that need technical solutions among other facets and uh, vice versa, uh, academics, as I hope we will see today, and researchers in general, and industry researchers in general, uh, have approaches that might help us longer term and hopefully midterm to address many of the most challenging problems that we face uh, at the Commission. As has been mentioned already, uh, network resiliency and reliability is probably among the oldest continuing topics that has been with us as each technology uh, comes, reaches maturity, and then maybe uh, is, is replaced and substituted by a newer technology. We are in the midst of such a transition now. We are still relying quite heavily, as we found out during Sandy, for example, on what some people call legacy networks, the copper network, the voice network, all of these things, particularly during emergencies, they remain important uh, parts of our infrastructure. It's voice calls of what we do when things don't work well. Then we also now have the supplementary and replacing infrastructures, the broadband IP infrastructure, that it becomes increasingly important, not just as one might surmise, just simply to look up Facebook statuses or other somewhat trivial matters, but they become increasingly important as means of coordinating between uh, the public, within government, and to, for the government to reach out to uh, the public at large, or to have kind of intermediate uh, citizen assistance taking place. Just as one example in a uh, community that um, in New Jersey where I uh, normally live just across the George Washington Bridge, uh, where we suffered not the type of devastating uh, damage that some other New Jersey shore towns uh, had to contend with, but we still had uh, power outages for more than a week uh, and we had uh, no, I, I, no fuel for roughly a week and a half or so of intermittent fuel email lists that reached a large part of a community, not the most fancy technology, but relying on internet was probably the most important means that our small town government, it's a really small town, about 8,000 people, had to reach and coordinate and make sure that people knew where they could get water, food, uh, could take a hot shower when a neighbor offered one, uh, could fill up their, their tank, all of these important things that go beyond just the first 24 hours of an incident. Thus, I'm particularly pleased today that we have the opportunity to hear uh, from about 18 or 19 researchers spanning really uh, the whole diversity of topics related to network resiliency. We'll have three panels today, uh, roughly organized. Uh, just to kind of make it fit. Uh, we'll start first by looking at a panel uh, on measurement and uh, network infrastructure. We'll then have a second pa panel after the lunch break uh, looking at the wireline infrastructure, radio access networks, and then thirdly, on the very important uh, wireless cellular infrastructure as well as uh, communication means, al alternative communication means. There will be some overlap between those. Uh, panels by necessity, so I encourage uh, everybody to contribute uh, by asking questions, for example, uh, to each of the panels. Let me say a few words about logistics. 
uh, we will be uh, doing a kind of a hybrid between the usual uh, FCC workshop format and the workshop conference format that many of the attendees and participants are familiar with. So we'll have uh, about 10 minutes uh, presentation during the first panel for each of the speakers. Um, we'll try during the first panel, see how that works, uh, to hold questions until the end and then have all the speakers be up here on the days to uh, answer questions from the audience uh, and uh, from our um, moderator and chair of each, um, each of the panels. We'll see how that works and we also have remote participation via both WebEx and the FCC.gov slash live uh, in that. Uh, all the materials, uh, the PowerPoint, the PDF versions of the PowerPoint slides, as well as supplementary papers from some of the participants, uh, some short, some long, will be available uh, both on uh, the conference workshop website that uh, you're familiar with, as well as uh, through our usual comment, uh, ECSF, uh, for uh, comment filings. Without further ado, I wanted to start up a, the first panel. I'd like to introduce uh, David Turetsky, who's the uh, Bureau Chief for Public Safety and Homeland Security uh, and has been uh, one of the drivers in making sure that we look systematically at the issues and lessons that we can learn uh, from Sandy and, and, and other similar events. And with that, David. <laughs> 